Good morning. Let's begin our service by singing hymn number 275. Praise now, creative mind, maker of earth and heaven. Glory and power to him belong. Joy of the sun and skies. Strength where the hills arise. So let us praise with joy and song. Hymn number 275. scriptural this morning will be given by Carol from New Jersey. Isaiah, thus saith the Lord that made thee and formed thee from the womb, which will help thee. Fear not, O Jacob, my servant, and thou, O Jeshurun, whom I have chosen. For I will pour water upon him that is thirsty, and floods upon the dry ground. I will pour my spirit upon thy seed, and my blessing upon thine offspring. I am the Lord, your Holy One, the Creator of Israel, your King. Thus saith the Lord, which maketh a way in the sea, and a path in the mighty waters, which bringeth forth the chariot and horse, the army and the power. They shall lie down together, they shall not rise. They are extinct, they are quenched as tow. Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing, now it shall spring forth, shall ye not know it? 
I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. This people have I formed for myself. They shall show forth my praise. We will now have a moment of silent prayer and follow with the Lord's Prayer with its spiritual interpretation as given in the Christian Science textbook. Our Father, who which art in heaven. Our Father, Mother, God, all harmonious. Hallowed be thy name. Adorable one. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom is come. Thou art ever present. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Enable us to know as in heaven, so on earth. God is omnipotent, supreme. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us grace for today. Feed the famished affections. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And love is reflected in love. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. And God leadeth us not into temptation, but delivereth us from sin, disease, and death. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for for God is infinite, all power, all life, truth, love, over all and all. Let's now sing hymn number 246. <clears throat> o thou who spreadest the heaven like a tent, he who depends on thee ne'er is forspent. Still for his might on thee he ever counteth. On wings of eagles he unwearied mounteth. Have ye not heard, have ye not known, the everlasting God creator is of heaven and earth, and he alone is Lord. Hymn number 246.
Welcome to the Sunday morning service of the Plainfield Christian Science Church Independent. You can find us not only here in Plainfield, but also on our website, plainfieldcs.com. And you can find us on YouTube, SoundCloud, Facebook, and Twitter. Our website has articles that will cover just about any circumstance you could find yourself in. Have you ever worried about where your life is headed? Well, there's a great article featured on the cover page of our website called One Step Enough for Me by Blanche Hersey Hogue. And we have others, wonderful articles. We have audio recordings, readings from Science and Health and miscellaneous writings by Mary Baker Eddy and other early workers. We begin each Sunday morning here at 10 a.m. with our roundtable discussion, which is a very good training session in Christian science. We have a testimony meeting every Wednesday evening at 8.15, where you can hear testimonies of healings and lives saved through the study and practice of Christian science. And you can listen to all of our services on our website, on YouTube, or from your telephone on a teleconference number that we provide. Also on Sunday mornings at 11 a.m., we have a Sunday school for children. And that Sunday school has its own teleconference number, so if you don't live in the area and have a child that would like to attend, just call us. We'll give you the number and your child will be most welcome. And for all of our services, we have a nursery for infants and toddlers. Uh, next Saturday at 10 a.m., we will have another Bible study class. <clears throat> so check the website for questions for that class, and please join us next Saturday morning at 10 a.m. Everyone is welcome here. And that includes all of you who are listening and participating from around the world. We will now have the reading of a testimony from the chapter entitled Fruitage from Science and Health, which attests to the healing power obtained just by reading the Christian Science textbook. And that reading this morning will be read by Jeff from New Jersey. Healed of Consumption and Asthma. It is a pleasure to acknowledge the great benefits which have come to me through Christian Science. It is nearly 10 years since I began the investigation of the subject by borrowing a copy of Science and Health. I had become a hopeless sufferer from asthma, the disease being so aggravated at times as to make breathing almost impossible. I was also a victim of that dread disease, consumption. It was hereditary, nearly, nearly all my family on both sides having passed away with it. I took up Christian science very much as a drowning man catches at a straw. However, I was much interested as soon as I began to understand it. And having read the book nearly all my waking hours for a few weeks, I became so much better and so convinced of its truth that myself and wife destroyed all the medicines in the house and have never since used any remedy except Christian science. I continued to study and to put into practice the teaching as best I knew and was restored to health in a few months. Prior to my investigation of Christian science, I had been from boyhood an outspoken infidel and had read that class of literature extensively and had no desire for anything of a religious nature. The orthodox teaching never having appealed to me as a rational exposition of an all-wise God. I now have no more doubt of the truth of the teaching of the great way shower, Jesus of Nazareth, then I doubt the correctness of the basic law of mathematics or music. 
I have no doubt whatever that Christian science saved me from the grave and thus proved a most practic practicable and efficient help in time of greatest need. However great my physical suffering has been, I can but feel glad that through it the door of consciousness was opened to let in the light of truth. Thus I have progressed a little way in the knowledge of God, good as revealed in Christian science. C.B. Webb, City, New Missouri. The lesson sermon for this morning can be found on page 22 of the Independent Christian Science Quarterly. Subject, God, the only cause and creator. Golden text is from Proverbs. The Lord hath made all things for himself. The responsive reading is from Genesis. <clears throat> In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. And God said, let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle and creeping thing, and beast of the earth after his kind. And it was so. And God made the beast of the earth after his kind, and cattle after their kind, and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. Fairly from Maryland, we'll read from the Bible. The Holy Bible. John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God and the Word was God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. James, do not err, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, and cometh down from the Father of light, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Of his own will begat he us with the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruit of his creatures. Ecclesiastes. He hath made everything beautiful in his time. I said in mine heart, 
God shall judge the righteous and the wicked. But there is a time there for every purpose and for every work. Luke. There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias of the course of Abiah, and his wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord, blameless. And they had no child, because that Elizabeth was barren. And they birth were, both were now well stricken in years. And it came to pass that while he executed the priest's office before God, in the order of his course, there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zacharias saw him, he was troubled and fear fell upon him. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son. And thou shalt call his name John. And thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. And many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God, and he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. And Zacharias said unto the angel, Whereby shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife well stricken in years. And the angel answering said unto him, I am Gabriel, that stand in the presence of God, and am sent to speak unto thee, and to show thee these glad tidings. And it came to pass, that as soon as the days of his ministration were accomplished, he departed to his own house. And after those days, his wife Elizabeth conceived, and hid herself five months, saying, Thus hath the Lord dealt with me in the days wherein he looked on me to take away my reproach among men. Now Elizabeth's full time came that she should be delivered, and she brought forth a son. And her neighbors and her cousins heard how the Lord had showed great mercy upon her, and they rejoiced with her. And it came to pass that on the eighth day they came to circumcise the child, and they called him Zacharias after the name of his father. And his mother answered and said, Not so, but he shall be called John. And the hand of the Lord was with him. Ephesians, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he hath purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. First Corinthians. Know ye not 
that ye are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. Let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seemeth to be wise in this world, let him become a fool that he may be wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, He taketh the wise in their own craftiness. And again, The Lord knoweth the thoughts of the wise, that they are vain. Therefore, let no man glory in men, for all things are yours whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas or the world or life or death or things present or things to come, all are yours. And ye are Christ, and Christ is God's. Ephesians. I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ for you Gentiles, For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his Spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height, and to know the love of Christ which passeth knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. Second Timothy. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner. But be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God, who has saved us and called us with an holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. Florence from Georgia will now read. I will read correlative passages from our textbook, Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures, by Mary Baker Eddy. The creative principle, life, truth, and love, is God. The universe reflects God. There is but one creator and one creation. This creation consists of the unfolding of spiritual ideas and their identities, which are embraced in the infinite mind and forever reflected. These ideas range from the infinitesimal to infinity, and the highest ideas are the sons and daughters of God. Science reveals only one mind, and this one shining by its own light and governing the universe, including man, in perfect harmony. This mind forms ideas, its own images, subdivides and radiates their borrowed light, intelligence, and so explains the scripture phrase, whose seed is in itself. Does God's ideas multiply and replenish the earth? The divine mind supports the sublimity, magnitude, and infinitude of spiritual creation. 
To grasp the reality and order of being in its science, you must begin by reckoning God as the divine principle of all that really is. Spirit, life, truth, love combine as one and are the scriptural names for God. All substance, intelligence, wisdom, being, immortality, cause and effect belong to God. These are His attributes, the eternal manifestations of the infinite divine principle love. No wisdom is wise but His wisdom. No truth is true. No love is lovely. No life is life but the divine. No good is but the good God bestows. Mortals can never understand God's creation while believing that man is a creator. Mind's control over the universe, including man, is no longer an open question, but is demonstrable science. Jesus illustrated the divine principle and the power of immortal mind by healing sickness and sin and destroying the foundations of death. Mistaking his origin and nature, man believes himself to be combined matter and spirit. He believes that spirit is sifted through matter, carried on a nerve, exposed to ejection by the operation of matter. The intellectual, the moral, the spiritual, yea, the image of infinite mind, subject to non-intelligence. Mortal thought transmits its own images and forms its offspring after human illusions. God Spirit works spiritually, not materially. Brain or matter never formed a human concept. Vibration is not intelligence, hence it is not a creator. Immortal ideas, pure, perfect, and enduring, are transmitted by the divine mind through divine science which corrects error with truth and demands spiritual thoughts, divine concepts, to the end that they may produce harmonious results. The theory that spirit is not the only substance and creator is pantheistic heterodoxy, which ultimates in sickness, sin, and death. It is the belief in a bodily soul and a material mind, a soul governed by the body and a mind in matter. This belief is shallow pantheism. The tree and herb do not yield fruit because of any propagating power of their own, but because they reflect the mind which includes all. Infinite mind creates and governs all, from the mental molecule to infinity. This divine principle of all expresses science and art throughout his creation and the immortality of man and the universe. Creation is ever appearing and must ever continue to appear from the nature of its inexhaustible source. Can there be any birth or death for man, the spiritual image and likeness of God? Instead of God sending sickness and death, he destroys them and brings to light immortality. Omnipotent and infinite mind made all and includes all. This mind does not make mistakes and subsequently correct them. God does not cause man to sin, to be sick, or to die. We cannot fathom 
the nature and quality of God's creation by diving into the shallows of mortal belief. We must reverse our feeble flutterings, our efforts to find life and truth in matter, and rise above the testimony of the material senses, above the mortal to the immortal idea of God. These clearer, higher views inspire the godlike man to reach the absolute center and circumference of his being. Cause does not exist in matter, in mortal mind, or in physical form. There can be but one creator who has created all. Whatever seems to be a new creation is but the discovery of some distant idea of truth. Else, it is a new multiplication of self-division of mortal thought, as when some finite sense peers from its cloister with amazement and attempts to pattern the infinite. The multiplication of a human and mortal sense of persons and things is not creation. A sensual thought, like an atom of dust thrown into the face of spiritual immensity, is dense blindness instead of a scientific eternal consciousness of creation. God fashions all things after his own likeness. Life is reflected in existence, truth in truthfulness. God in goodness, which impart their own peace and permanence. Love, redolent with unselfishness, bathes all in beauty and light. The grass beneath our feet silently exclaims, The meek shall inherit the earth. The modest abutus sends her sweet breath to heaven. The great rock gives shadow and shelter. The sunlight glints from the church dome, glances into the prison cell, glides into the sick chamber, brightens the flower, beautifies the landscape, blesses the earth. Man, made in his likeness, possesses and reflects God's dominion over all the earth. Man and woman, as coexistent and eternal with God, forever reflect in glorified quality the infinite Father-Mother God. Deity was satisfied with his work. How could he be otherwise, since the spiritual creation was the outgrowth, the emanation of his infinite self-containment and immortal wisdom. When we learn the way in Christian science and recognize man's spiritual being, we shall behold and understand God's creation, all the glories of earth and heaven and man. We will now have a moment of silent prayer for our world.
Let's now sing hymn number 207. The words of this hymn are by Mary Baker Eddy. O oh, gentle presence, peace and joy and power, O oh, life divine that owns each waiting hour, thou love that guards the nestling's faltering flight, keep thou, my child, on upward wing tonight. Hymn number 207.
beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was spoken that it might be heard. In the beginning was the Word, it already existed. And the word was beginning spoken that it might be heard and thus occurred the universe and upside down We're just hearing it all wrong In the beginning was the Word And you and I And all creation Is its song Let's now sing hymn number 62. From all that dwell below the skies, let the Creator's praise arise. Let the Redeemer's name be sung through every land by every tongue. Hymn number 62.
I will read from the Christian Science textbook the scientific statement of being and the collective passages from 1 John 3rd chapter. There is no life, truth, intelligence, nor substance in matter, or its infinite mind and its infinite manifestation. For God is all in all. Spirit is immortal truth. Matter is mortal error. Spirit is the real and eternal. Matter is the unreal and temporal. Spirit is God, and man is his image and likeness. Therefore, man is not material. He is spiritual. Behold, what manner of love the Father had bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not, because he knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Every man that had this hope in him purified himself, even as he is pure. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Ghost be with you all. Amen. Amen.